Han Ruwetting stood outside the Emery headquarters, slightly tilting her head back. The sun above was bright and warm, and she squinted, a smile slowly spreading across her face. A long line formed outside the building, accompanied by the soft murmur of conversations. The ultra-high-definition screen on the building's exterior played advertisements for Emery's latest robot. Yes, Emery was a renowned tech company in the country, primarily focusing on the development of intelligent robots. Entering the 21st century, artificial intelligence developed rapidly. After nearly half a century of innovative advancements, AI had become an integral part of people's lives, with intelligent robots being one of the most representative manifestations. Scenes once depicted in movies had become a reality in the mid-21st century. Just a month ago, Emery had developed what was claimed to be the greatest invention of the century, the Love Continue Intelligent Robot. The advertisement kept repeating, have you lost a loved one, friend, or partner? Do you wish to have them back by your side? Love Continue brings back what you love. The line grew shorter, with each person entering and emerging with someone else, their faces lit with radiant smiles. Han Ruwetting finally lowered her head, nervously clutching the bank card in her hand. Inside the building, the last person in front of her left with a satisfied smile. She looked up and saw a whole row of people standing across from her, men and women, young and old. Her gaze instantly fell on the far right corner. There stood a clean-cut man, dressed in a white shirt. His skin wasn't pale, but a healthy wheat color. His eyebrows were soft, giving off a gentle and warm vibe even without a smile. Han Ruwetting's eyes instantly welled up, and she took a step forward, ready to rush over. A staff member quickly held her back. Miss, please fill out the information and make the payment first. Okay. Han Ruwetting took a deep breath and followed the staff to a table, where she filled out a user information form and made the final payment. Another staff member had already brought the man over. Hello, Miss Han. Thank you for purchasing Love Continue Robot number 78. Here is the manual and remote control. He handed over a box. Please remember, once number 78 becomes aware of its identity as a robot, its system will collapse and the self-destruct program will automatically activate for force destruction. Han Ruwetting nodded, taking the box in one hand and gripping the man's cold hand with the other. A chi, let's go home. The story of Han Ruwetting and Gucci dates back to their university days. She remembered the day they started school vividly. There was no wind, and the sky was an unusually clear blue. Since the rapid technological advancements post, 2040 had led to environmental degradation. Han Ruwetting hadn't seen such a blue sky in years. She was squeezed into a crowded subway, sitting ungracefully on her suitcase, holding her phone with one hand while talking to her mom. Before she could finish the call, she glanced up and saw a sneaky-looking kid reaching into a man's pocket. Han Ruwetting's father was a police officer, so she had a strong sense of justice from a young age. Seeing a pickpocket in action made her instantly furious. She shouted, what are you doing? And charged forward, delivering a solid beating to the thief, who had no chance to fight back and kept crying for help. The whole carriage stared in astonishment, unable to imagine how such a delicate-looking girl could have such formidable fighting power. Of all the things you could do, you chose to be a thief. Behave yourself, or I'll take you to the police station. Do you dare to steal again? The pickpocket, terrified, kept saying, I won't, I won't. Han Ruwetting snatched the wallet from his hand, snorted, and then turned to the victim. It was a very clean-cut man, with a gentle expression and a hint of a smile on his lips. Here's your wallet. Be more careful next time, she said. The man looked at her for a few seconds, reached out to take it, and said softly, Thank you. Han Ruwetting waved her hand grandly. You're welcome. Just then, the subway arrived at the station. She hurriedly grabbed her luggage and got off. As she turned, she vaguely heard a few teasing voices. Someone seemed to be saying, Chiga, did you just get saved by a hero? Ha ha ha. The second time they met was during the military training performance. The final event was a martial arts demonstration by seniors from the previous year. What was initially an empty audience seemed to suddenly fill up. 
Han Ruwedding's group had already completed their performance and were sitting cross-legged on the lawn. She turned to her roommate and asked, What's going on? Her roommate rolled her eyes. You don't get it, do you? I heard a Big Shot is about to perform. Of course, it's packed. Big Shot? The guy from the computer science department, Gucci. When girls sit together, they love to gossip, and Han Ruwedding was naturally familiar with the person everyone talked about daily. Exactly. Just as they were speaking, two people walked onto the field, and the audience erupted in cheers. Han Ruwedding quietly covered her ears. As the two walked closer, their faces gradually became clear in Han Ruwedding's line of sight. The slightly taller man wore a camouflage t-shirt with gentle and handsome features. Han Ruwedding was stunned. Wasn't this the guy who almost got pickpocket? The performance had already started. The two seemed to be genuinely fighting rather than putting on a show, with one sweeping kick after another punch, leaving the audience in awe. Han Ruwedding took off her hat to cover her face, feeling extremely embarrassed. This level of martial prowess made her earlier act of bravery seem almost pointless. Gu Qi and Zhong Qingyun were going at it for real, both drenched in sweat. Zhong Qingyun landed a punch on Gu Qi's shoulder. You're hitting pretty hard, aren't you? Likewise, Gu Qi smiled, turning to look at the group of green uniformed students on the lawn. He seemed to notice something, and the smile on his lips deepened. Han Ruwedding found herself constantly running into the elusive Gu Qi, much to her annoyance, despite others' envy of her so-called luck. Every time she saw Gu Qi, Han Ruwedding wished she could dig a hole and bury herself. This feeling intensified after a senior remarked, Hey, isn't this the junior sister who saved Qi Go last time? Imagine trying to show off in front of someone as powerful as Gu Qi. It was absolutely embarrassing. Hence, Han Ruwedding perfected the art of avoidance. Yet, in a secluded corner of the library, she tragically encountered the big shot once again. Gucci closed his book and put it back on the shelf, one hand in his pocket, his eyes calmly resting on Han Ruwedding. Um, hello, senior. She forced a big smile. Goodbye, senior. But before she could take a step, an indifferent voice sounded from behind her. Are you avoiding me? No, no, I really have something to do. A shadow loomed over her, and Han Ruwedding froze. When she looked up, she found herself staring into Gu Qi's dark eyes. They were standing very close, so close that she could clearly smell the faint scent of his body wash. Her ears turned red immediately, and she quietly took a step back, stammering, S. Senior, what do you want? Can't you tell? Gu Qi slightly frowned, his features still as gentle and warm as when they first met. I'm pursuing you. Han Ruwedding had never imagined falling in love during college, much less getting married right after graduation. But meeting Gu Qi had disrupted all her plans for the future. This seemingly gentle, yet actually domineering man had subtly and persistently invaded her life. He wasn't a man of many words, his love was introverted yet profound. It was like the umbrella he always tilted towards her on rainy days, or the winter coats with pockets always available to warm her hands. From school uniforms to wedding gowns, they spent four years together. Han Ruwedding would always remember his voice echoing through the dazzling hall, carried by the microphone to every corner as he said, I do. In good times or bad, in wealth or poverty, in sickness or health, in joy or sorrow, I will always love you, cherish you, and remain faithful to you, until death do us part. Plop. A tear silently slid down. Han Ruwedding pulled herself out of the long reverie, looking affectionately at the man sleeping on the bed. Her pale fingers gently stroked his face, from his eyes to his nose, and finally his lips. A chi. I miss you so much. The power light on the remote control in her hand blinked as she softly pressed the switch. Gucci opened his eyes, his vision filled with the white ceiling. As he looked down, he saw their wedding photo hanging on the TV wall. For a moment, he felt disoriented, as if he had been dreaming a long, long dream filled with an inescapable pain, though he couldn't remember why. A chi. A soft hand held his. He turned to see Han Ruwedding, her head tilted, smiling at him. Ting ting, good morning. 
Han Ruwading laughed instantly, leaning over him. It's already noon, lazy pig. Love Continue could bring back those who were lost. Emory Corporation created the Love Continue Intelligent Robot based on customer descriptions, producing a perfect replica. These robots had bodies with a 95% similarity to the original and contained all their memories. Except for the fact that what beat in their chests was not a heart but a machine, they were almost indistinguishable from the living. Han Ruwading lay on his chest with her eyes closed, a slight bitterness in her heart. After two years, he was finally back. A chi. Not even death can separate us. The next morning, sunlight filtered delicately into the room. Han Ruwading opened her eyes to find the space beside her empty. For a moment, she was stunned, as if everything that happened yesterday had been nothing but an illusion. A chi. You're up? Come and have breakfast. A voice came from the doorway. Gu Chi, wearing an apron, stood there. Before Han Ruwading could react, Gu Chi had already walked over to the bed, his large hand ruffling her hair. Still sleepy, she suddenly threw herself into his arms, softly calling husband. Gu Chi, surprised by his usually shy wife's sudden enthusiasm, paused for a moment. What's wrong? Han Ruwading shook her head, only feeling a deep fear of an empty bed and a lonely apartment. All right, get up. It's the weekend, and I'm taking you to see a movie. After breakfast and lingering at home for a bit, Gucci took Han Ruwading to Ju E Plaza, the most famous shopping mall in Ning City. It was still early, and there weren't many people in the cinema. Gucci went to buy the tickets, but when he turned around, he saw Han Ruwading standing by the entrance, lost in thought. What are you thinking about? Han Ruwading took his hand and smiled. I was thinking about the first time we watched a movie together. Gucci smiled at her words. That was their first date. Han Ruwading still remembered that day vividly. Gucci wore a light blue shirt with the top two buttons undone, revealing an enticing collarbone. The ticket clerk, smiling, suggested, how about a horror movie? Many couples watch those. The word couple made Han Ruwading blush. She sneaked a glance at Gucci, wondering how he would react to a horror movie. Would he remain calm, or would he be startled? Ugh. It seemed weird no matter how she imagined it. No horror movies, she blurted out, randomly pointing at a movie. Let's watch this. The ticket clerk blinked, then gave her a knowing smile. Gucci leaned in, his breath warm against her ear. So, this is your taste. Han Ruwading was puzzled and looked up at the screen, only to see that the movie she had pointed at was Lust, Caution. Remembering the embarrassment from back then, Han Ruwading couldn't help but chuckle. Gucci pointed to a nearby poster for Lust, Caution. With a teasing smile, he asked, Does my lady still want to watch Lust, Caution? This cinema often showed classic movies. Han Ruwading's cheeks turned crimson, and she pinched him hard. Gucci didn't mind, laughing heartily. His usually gentle demeanor rarely showed such clear emotion. As Han Ruwading watched his handsome profile, her eyes were filled with a look that no one else could understand. They never got to watch the movie. Just as they were about to enter, Gucci ran into Cheng Fei, a former college classmate. She was a beautiful woman who had once pursued Gucci during their university days. Senior, Cheng Fei had long shed her youthful inexperience and now exuded the charm of a professional woman. She said a few words to her friends before walking over to Gu Qi. Senior, long time no see. Are you alone? Gu Qi gave a faint smile. No, I'm here with Ting Ting. Cheng Fei's smile faltered slightly. How has she been? I just returned to the country and couldn't make it to your wedding. I'm really sorry about that. It's all right. I heard you had a car accident recently. Were you injured badly? A chi. Han Ruwading's nearly uncontrolled voice cut through the air. She didn't even care that she spilled the soda she was holding, rushing over immediately. Cheng Fei was startled. Ting Ting. Han Ruwading's heart was still racing. Seeing Cheng Fei had nearly made her stop breathing. Even though Cheng Fei had just returned to the country, Han Ruwading was terrified. She was afraid Cheng Fei knew about it, afraid she might inadvertently spill. A chi, I don't want to watch the movie anymore. Let's go. Gucci looked down at her pale face and didn't hesitate. 
He wrapped his arm around her and nodded apologetically at Cheng Fei. We'll be going now. As she watched the two walk away, Cheng Fei frowned in confusion. After a moment of thought, she took out her phone and made a call. Hey, Xiaomi. I just saw Senior Gu and Han Ruwedding. Whatever the person on the other end said made Cheng Fei's face change dramatically. Gu Qi's return made Han Ruwedding feel like she had gone back two years, to a time before the accident, when they were planning their wedding, their honeymoon, and their future together. She had once believed they would grow old together. It was now the second month since Gu Qi's return. Han Ruwedding sat in her office, feeling a bit down. This mood was caused by something Gu Qi had said the night before. Ting Ting, let's have a child. A child, a child with Gu Qi. The Love Continue robot was indeed lifelike, but it was still a robot. Even with the same appearance, habits, and memories. She had been walking on thin ice, carefully guarding the secret, afraid that Gu Qi would encounter someone who would reveal his true identity. As the staff had warned her, if the Love Continue robot ever learned of its true nature, it would activate its self-destruct system. Artificial intelligence had developed to a frightening degree, and Love Continue surpassed all expectations. These robots had their own thoughts and could control their actions, living and thinking as the deceased once did. If their true nature was exposed, the consequences would be disastrous. This was why Emory Corporation had implemented the self-destruct protocol. Suddenly, the sky darkened, with flashes of lightning piercing through. A storm was approaching. Han Ruwedding's phone beeped with a message from Gu Qi. I'm coming to pick you up. She was taken aback, realizing it was already time to leave work. Quickly packing up, she headed downstairs. Outside, the rain had started, accompanied by the sound of distant thunder. Han Ruwedding stood at the entrance of her office building, watching a black umbrella gradually become visible across the street. A long, slender hand held the handle, and as the umbrella tilted up, it revealed a clean, gentle face. Gucci had also seen her, a soft smile spreading across his lips. There weren't many cars on the road, and as he walked toward her, a sudden screech of brakes and a blaring horn pierced the air. Han Ruwedding's heart skipped a beat, and long-buried memories surged back like a tide. It was a rainy day two years ago. They were returning from their honeymoon in Yunnan. The journey home was long, but they were happy, chatting and laughing along the way. She remembered the song Yulo Shangyonit playing in the car. It was a very old song. She had smiled and said, I hope you'll be with me for the rest of my life. Gucci had a gentle expression, one hand on the wheel and the other reaching out to hold her. The accident happened in a flash. She heard the screech of brakes and the honking of a horn. The world spun around her. Blood covered her face, sticking to her eyes, making it hard to see. She kept calling his name. Watch out. Instinctively, Han Ruwedding lunged forward, pushing him out of the way. They tumbled together, rolling a few times before stopping. Gu Qi sat up, his face pale. Ting Ting, are you all right? Han Ruwedding felt pain all over her body. She lifted a hand to her aching head, her thoughts scattered. The driver rushed over. Are you okay? I can take you to the hospital. Gucci looked up, his eyes bloodshot. Get lost. He picked her up, leaving the umbrella behind as he ran into the rain. The summer rain came and went quickly. Han Ruwedding nestled in Gucci's arms and suddenly said, I want to go to Ning University. Gu Bao said, Let's go home first. We can go tomorrow, okay? I want to go now. Ning University looked the same as it did back then. The road leading into the campus was lined with mimosa trees, and the rain had left the ground covered with fallen flowers. Walking to the sports field, the red rubber track looked just like it did in her memories. After a moment of silence, Han Ruwedding spoke. I watched you perform martial arts here. I thought to myself, this guy looks so gentle, he might get knocked out right away. Gucci laughed. Do I really look that weak? Han Ruwedding pretended to think. A little. Later, I realized how amazing you were. I was so embarrassed thinking about how I tried to show off in front of you on the first day. You must have been laughing at me, right? No, I just thought you were very special. In fact, he had already noticed the pickpocket and was about to act when he heard her shout. 
Her movements were sharp and decisive, showing she had some training. Her bold, you're welcome, made him feel amused. She seemed so delicate, but had a heroine spirit. Later, he heard there was a very cute freshman in the Chinese department. His roommates insisted he go see her. That day, they were practicing military exercises. Her movements were exceptionally precise, and her willingness to fall without hesitation made the guys wince. As he watched, he couldn't help but smile and casually asked, Who is she? Han Ruwading, from the Chinese department. Didn't I tell you? Isn't she pretty? He didn't reply but kept watching her. She was indeed pretty, with fair skin, a characteristic gentleness of Jiangnan girls, big eyes, and a slightly rounded chin. She looked very cute. He found himself noticing her more and more. He felt unhappy whenever he heard someone confessing to her, and he felt joy whenever he saw her looking embarrassed when they accidentally met. When he told his friends about this, they looked at him as if they'd seen a ghost. Are you in love? Who is she? He thought, so this is what liking someone feels like. Ah Chi, Han Ruwading's voice brought him back from his memories. I remember, you used to work at Emory, right? This season's weather was stiflingly hot, and even though it had rained, it wasn't cold, but Gu Chi felt a chill spreading through his entire body. Han Ruwading smiled faintly. Ah Chi, you don't have to do this. Stop it. Gu Chi grabbed her hand, his knuckles turning white from the force. Let's go home, okay? His voice was filled with an unprecedented sense of helplessness, almost pleading. Han Ruwading looked down at their clasped hands. It hurts. Her hand had been scraped when she pushed Gu Chi earlier, covered in wounds. Gu Chi froze, immediately loosening his grip. I'm sorry, let's get you bandaged up. No need, it just hurts. Gu Chi's body stiffened as he took a deep breath. Ting Ting. Han Ruwading raised her hand in front of them, showing the wounds on her palm. They were painful, yet there wasn't a drop of blood. The robot you designed is indeed perfect. This pain feels as real as if I were alive. But, unfortunately, robots don't bleed. Isn't that right, Mr. Gu? Mr. Gu was the youngest scientist in the field of artificial intelligence and the inventor of the Love Continue robots. Love Continue robots were almost perfect. They could think, feel pain, cry, but they could not bleed. Enough! For the first time, Gucci lost control in front of her, his voice rising in what seemed like extreme anger. Ting Ting, please stop. Tears fell from his gentle face. Han Ruwading was stunned for a moment, but then smiled contentedly. Achi, I'm glad you're alive. A crushing pain engulfed Gu Chi, his lips pressed tightly together, exposing his suffering completely. His memory involuntarily returned to two years ago. At the moment the truck crashed, Han Ruwading had thrown herself at him, taking the brunt of the impact. In the blood-soaked car, she lay on him, her body stained red, repeatedly calling his name. Ah Chi, don't sleep, talk to me, okay? The few minutes waiting for rescue were the longest of his life. At that time, his entire body hurt, his mind was fuzzy, and he wanted to pass out, but she kept waking him up. It wasn't until he was rescued that he truly saw her condition. From her waist down to her legs, there wasn't a single intact area. He heard a police officer sigh. Her spine and leg bones are completely broken. It's a miracle she held on until the man was saved. The whole world turned black. In his last conscious moment, he was bewildered, thinking, just a second before being rescued, she was still smiling, saying to him, you go out first, the police will be back to save me soon. Ah Chi, let's have a boy when we're better, one who looks just like you. It wasn't Han Ruwading who survived that car accident two years ago. It was him. Ah Chi, forget it. I'm already dead. No matter how much a robot resembles me, it's still a cold machine. She slowly backed away. You're still young. You shouldn't spend the rest of your life like this. There was a faint sound of electrical currents. Gucci looked at her in anguish. Ting Ting, don't. Before he could finish speaking, an explosion suddenly rang out, accompanied by Han Ruwading's final words, Ah Chi, I've never regretted it. The thing I never regretted the most in my life was throwing myself at you back then. 
Seeing you alive makes me the happiest. After the explosion, the lawn was scattered with parts, and Gucci stood motionless in place. It was as if he had returned to the time right after he lost Han Ruwedding, when the overwhelming longing drove him to despair. The highly advanced medical technology couldn't save her, but what about technology? Was there a way to extend her life? Love continue, bringing back your beloved. What might be the greatest invention of the century had initially started because a man lost his beloved wife. And Han Ruwedding was Love Continues Prototype 1. One year later, Love Continues' fourth round of sales. Early in the morning, a long line had formed outside the Emerson headquarters building. A soft and pretty woman stood in the middle of the line, looking up at the advertisements on the big screen, tightly holding a bank card in her hand. Finally, an hour later, it was her turn. Her gaze had been fixed on a man in the corner from the moment she entered. He was a very clean man, looking as gentle as Jade. After paying, she gently took his hand. Ah, chi, let's go home. Two staff members watched their gradually disappearing figures and couldn't help but whisper, Is Mr. Gu really okay with this? This is already the third time since last year. Well, as the saying goes, only the person drinking the water knows whether it is cold or warm. Perhaps for Mr. Gu, this is the best life. In the future, technology might allow a person's life to be prolonged in another way. However, is that person still the one you remember?